once in a while you come across one that really grips you. And about four or five months ago, I had the opportunity to listen to a young man, his name is Mitch Bonaire, speak. And he made me fall in love with education again. So if he can do that, or somebody who's been in the career for 22 years, I, really, I believe he's going to bring a very strong message to each and every one of us today. But before I bring him up here, I would like to introduce Lee Lonzo, if he would stand up, Lee, and his wife, Pat. And if you could give them a round of applause. They have been working on this with me. I think their little business is not rich in funds, and he said, we don't care, we'll be there for you. And that being said, please a warm zebra welcome for Mitch and the message he's going to bring to you. When I was growing up, this is what I heard from my family. You can do anything the other kids can do. It may take you a little longer or be a little hard, but you can do it. I just never dreamed it would be so difficult. My name is Mitch Barron. And I am a 2015 graduate of Noblesville High School and a student at Ivy Tech Community College. Like all students, I've faced challenges in my life. It's like having an invisible backpack that weighs you us down. The first thing in my backpack is I was born with cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy makes some things difficult for me. For example, go home tonight and try tying your shoes with a pair of socks on your hands. That's what it was like for me. I was 16 before I could tie my shoes. In elementary and middle school, it made me feel different because the gym teacher had to help me. It also made me sad, since all of my friends could do it on their own. As a student with disabilities, some people ignored me. They looked at me differently. They treated me differently. And they made fun of the way I spoke, and they thought it was funny how I walked. Like all kids, I wanted more than anything to have friends and someone to talk to. I wanted to feel like I belonged. You see, I still didn't feel like I was a part of my school. I could sit right next to my classmates, but I felt like I was in a different room. Other students would tell me to do stuff, and I would do it, even though I knew they were just being mean to me. Things like ask out girls so they could laugh at me. They dared me to see how much food I would eat. They abused my friendship. I even broke my collarbone because one of them told me to jump over a ramp. They bullied me, but I wanted to hang out with them because I just wanted to bully them. Once a so-called friend touched me in the freezing cold on the golf course. He said he would be right back, so I waited. I didn't know where I was or how to get home. My mom was looking all over for me and couldn't find me. I finally found my way to a school, and someone called my mom. They made themselves feel good on my expense. I just wanted to feel included and new and respected. From the earliest time I could remember, I wanted to play sports. My friends played sports, but I felt left out because I couldn't play. People thought because of my disabilities that I wasn't good enough or I might get hurt. 
But then my parents found an awesome organization called Special Olympics. From the very first practice that I attended, I knew that for the first time, I had an opportunity to do something that I had been missing my whole life. I finally found a place where I belonged. My mother must have known that day. She went out to the car and cried for joy. I've now competed in seven different sports for Special Olympics, and I get to compete against others with similar abilities. Special Olympics is a big family. It is also the place where I learned to conquer my fears. It helped with my fitness and health. I'm no longer that lazy guy who sits on his butt, eats junk food, and plays video games all day. In Special Olympics, I'm defined by my abilities, not my disabilities. I love being a part of Special Olympics. And I thought I was as good as I could get, but I was wrong. It got even better because of Champions Together and Unified Track. Champions Together is a partnership between Special Olympics and the Indiana High School Athletic Association. For my last two years of high school, I was given the opportunity to run Unified Track for my high school team. Unified Track is an actual school sport with an IHSA sectional, regional, and state championship. When I first heard about this, I said, are you lying to me? You mean I'm able to run for my school and I'm able to run with my friends? Unified Track was like a dream. I got to run on my school track with athletes that I had watched and admired for years. I was on a team of football, baseball, soccer players, and even dance team members who wanted to make a difference. I got a train with them too. We were true teammates. It was an incredible experience for me. You see, I was always that kid with my head down, walking the hallways next to my school aid, knowing everyone, but not being noticed. I didn't totally feel like I fit in in my school until I was competing and I had friends. Some of them on the team have changed. They were the same kids that were picking on me. This program has allowed them to see who I really was. They see me on the inside and how much this means to me, inside and outside. I was co-captain of my Unified Track team. Being part of Unified Track made me feel courageous, fearless, and plus. And it was ridiculously fun. It is like the body system where I experienced love, hard work, and responsibility. I call it the inclusion revolution. No one is left behind. There is a big difference between my old and my new friends. My new friends are loving, believing, and trusting. They had my back. Our team stuck together. Unified track and champions together has changed them and changed me. I received a letter jacket and lettered in track, but I now know what was really important was not that, but the lasting friendships that I made. Now Special Olympics starting similar programs for elementary and middle school through partnerships with the Indiana Council for our administrators of special education and the Indiana Middle Level Educators Association. I am hopefully, I am hopeful that Rochester 
will be seriously will seriously consider being involved in these programs. I'm incredibly honored to have the opportunity to speak to you all today. I know firsthand that the impact that you can have on all students. Every day of my elementary, middle school, and high school experiences was affected positively or negatively by adults who worked for my schools. Thankfully, I was blessed. Many more were caring and encouraging. The positive ones made a significant difference in my life. They were a big part of me graduating high school, enrolling in college classes, and on me having the confidence to stand before you today. I have, some, I have had some pretty amazing teachers and aides. One of those teachers was Mrs. Keister. She made sure all of us were included in school, sports, and life. She treated us like her own children. She passed away, but she continued to provide me with inspiration. She's my guardian angel. In general, my teachers had high expectations of me and never gave up on me. They wanted me to do my best. They, con they connected with me and cared about me. It was hard for me to move from Ohio to Indiana because I had to leave all my friends. It became a new chapter in my life. We looked at a lot of schools in central Indiana, but we chose Noblesville because of another huge figure in my life. Mr. Ben was the first person we met, and he became my sixth grade counselor. He was welcoming, friendly, caring, and immediately made us feel at home. He told my parents that I needed to be mainstreamed and start off on a track to graduate. He not only raised our expectations, but he helped match my learning styles and needs to accommodations to help me succeed. He not only, most of all, he cared. He continued to follow up and check on my progress throughout middle school and all the way through high school and graduation. But all of you have the power to make a positive, positive difference in the lives of students. Like the cafeteria worker who knew that I needed lunch for my medication and bought me lunch from her own son's account. Like the custodian who always smiled and never got angry when he had to cut off my log because I lost my key again. Like the bus driver who made sure other students didn't bully me, tease me, or disrespect me, knowing how hurtful it was, even though sometimes I laughed along. Or the building level of administrators and counselors that were positive examples of, for respect, tolerance, and inclusion. And central administrators that supported all the students to succeed. In conclusion, I have a question to ask you. Are you ready to join the inclusion revolution? If so, you are now called to make a difference one student at a time. If you're saying to yourself, I can't make it really make a difference, you are wrong. We all need to be able to do things that we dreamed about growing up. As educators, you have the power to encourage every student to help achieve those dreams. 
and for students like me to help take the this out of disabilities, to show everyone's abilities. Don't wait for someone else. Be the person that makes a difference. Thank you. I'm not sure what happened to the slide, and he's been a bit humble in his presentation, but a few things that didn't get fully presented, and I want to apologize. I wasn't sure if he was going to speak on those, and I most certainly didn't want to steal his thunder, is that Mitch also serves on the board of directors with corporate executives, health professionals, attorneys, um, sits right next to those involved with the Indiana Pacers and the Indianapolis Colts, and is a voice for students and an advocate for them at that level as well. So if he doesn't make you fall in love with public education again, I don't know. Um, Mitch, you talked about having each other's back, right. and we are a zebra family, a zebra nation, and we want to welcome you to our family. Uh, thank you. 